Hi there. Uh, welcome. It's Karen Friedland here. And um, I appreciate all of you coming to be part of this video, this Facebook Live video. Uh, during this period that's so crazy busy. Hi, Claudia. So nice to see you. Um, I hope everybody had, we're Hanukkah people, and I hope you all had a great Hanukkah. We did, and um, spent it with the kids a little bit, and ate too many potato latkes, which are pancakes. And I'm afraid all that wonderful partying isn't done. And I hope all of you have a really wonderful holiday. But um, today I wanted to talk to you, well, I'm the, I, let me say that I am the developer of Art Sparks cards. And Art Sparks are a creative inspiration deck that inspires you in two ways. On one side of the cards, let me get them out. They come in this pretty purple polka dot pouch. On one side of the cards are examples of my art, which I hope is inspirational. And on the other side, there are creative projects. They're very open-ended projects and they provide, each card provides a small skill and then a question at the bottom that lets you reflect and enhance your learning, but they really, there's no way to do it wrong. They just help you along to create what you'd love to create. And um, so I wanted to, uh, we're going to look at the cards today and pick a card and do a project. But before we get started, I was um, working with um, one of my coaches. Her name is Kyla Givehand, and she's a very talented visual artist as well as being a talented business person. And she does coaching in both of those areas. And uh, she challenged her, her members to come up with a teaching manifesto. And I thought, manifesto? That's great. I love the idea of a manifesto. So uh, I sat down and wrote it, even though it was optional. And I thought I'd share with you um, basically, it's telling you what my teaching philosophy is. And I've been a teaching artist is, since I was a teenager from camp all the way on to adulthood, uh, teaching people of all ages. I love working with adults in particular to help them reach their creativity. And that goes along with the fact that I really believe that everybody is a creative being. And we have may have different ways that we're creative, but humans are programmed to be part of the creative experience and creative expression. So I want to help people who are looking to do that, but feel that they don't know how or that they're undirected. And... Um, I feel it's very important when you make that endeavor, when you make that step to be successful at what you try, because if you're not successful, eventually nobody really wants to do what they've been a failure at. So um, that's why whenever I do a project with any students and, and with my cards as well, that I always make sure that there's a skill that one can learn and that'll make you successful with the project. So that's my manifesto, and I hope you like it. And I um, was going through the cards today and had a really hard time deciding what to do as a project. And I finally decided to work on card number 11. So if you have your Art Sparks cards, you can pull out number 11. 
and I will quickly read to you what it says. It says, varying the sizes, draw three geometric shapes, distributing them so that they lead your eye in a circle around the page. Use lines, use lines, straight, curved, zigzag, spiral, thick and thin to connect the shapes to one another. Add color. And then I ask if you feel a sense of unity in your picture. Because what this exercise does, what this project does, is teach you all about unity in a painting. Because a painting, if it has elements that all stand by themselves, it doesn't work together as a unified piece. Uh, each element may be something that you like, but you won't like it when you look at it as a whole. It's kind of like going to a party. If, if the people at the party don't interact and don't get along, then there's no fun at the party. So uh, kind of thinking about that this time of year. So um, we're going to learn a bit about unity today. And I want to tell you, I'd love you to paint along with me. So let me tell you the materials that I'll be working with today. I've got to put my cards to the side so they don't get painted on. They have been more than once. And the materials we'll use today are paint. Paint. This, I love these little bottles from Liquitex. This is the Liquitex soft body. And I also use the heavy body sometimes from Liquitex. I also use golden paints, which I'm sure you have seen before. Oh, and I've just painted the paint tube. Oh, well, this is white, but it now looks red. Okay, so paint is the first thing that I've got on my list. Next, of course, you need brushes, brushes, brushes. And I like to have a variety of sizes, although I usually end up using only one or two brushes for the whole painting. I also use these um, paint, what are they called again? Paint scrapers kind of things. And they come in a bunch of different little points and they're really fun for scraping through the paint. If you don't have them, you can use the back of your paintbrush. You can use um, a popsicle stick. You can use a skewer. You can use um, a palette knife. Any of these things will work quite well to scrape through things. Got a pencil. I have, um, you can work either on paper or canvas. Yeah, paper and canvas. Sorry, I'm still not used to which way the camera has me angling things. And um, you may want a sketchbook to work up, to work up your piece your ideas before you begin. So a sketchbook can be handy. And the other thing that, um, but a sketchbook's not required. Other thing that's not required, but you may enjoy having are water-soluble pencils or water-soluble crayons. I happen to have the, uh, today I have the Faber-Castell um, gel sticks. Whoops, and if you take the package out upside down, they won't fall out. So these are the Faber-Castell gel sticks. And we may have a little fun with them today as well. So the first thing I'd like to do is maybe make a sketch of some of my ideas. So it says geometric shapes, but I'm not real literal on that. And I'm going to tilt my camera down so you can actually see what I'm working on. And um, yeah, that'll be better. And I hope you can see it. 
So I'm going to um, make a quick sketch of what I think I'd like to have. I want to have three shapes. So I always love having a circle. And I like the scribbly, well, that's not quite a circle, is it? It's an oval. I like the scribbly, scribbly effect of working with the pencil. The next thing, I, next shape I'm going to have is going to go down along the bottom, I think. And I'm going to make that shape. I don't know what to call that. It's kind of a kind of an arrow sort of shape. And you notice this one's quite large. This is sort of medium size. So the next one's going to be small. And that's um, that's going to be an elliptical or almond kind of shape. Now my idea is to then connect them and it says on the card to connect to connect um, using lines, straight lines, curved, zigzag, spiral, thick and thin, anything you can think of. So um, I think I'm going to um, have some curves here, some curves, maybe even another curve over there that connects these two. And then I think I will have a really, or maybe this will be a spirally kind of shape that comes down and snakes in there. And then I want to use some straight lines between these two. And so that pretty much, I might even add some more straight lines over here or some zigzag might be interesting. So these pretty much give you an idea of what's going to happen compositionally on my canvas. I'm going to work in canvas. Of course, if you don't want to work in abstraction, but you'd rather work more in representation, you could well, take a piece of paper. I think it's nice if you can actually see some contrast. Let me open this to a page so we, here. Here's the page where you'll be able to see uh, my paper. So it doesn't have to be abstract. The same principle Turn it over. The same principle holds when you work with um, representation. So if I wanted to do um, a butterfly, there's my butterfly and my butterfly is quite large, so I think I will do a millipede with some legs, lots of legs, millipede. Got the eyes up here. Okay, a millipede. That's kind of my medium element. And then let's have um, 
a little bumblebee. Let's see, what does a bumblebee look like? I think he's got a head there. And then he also has antennae. And of course, he's got stripes. And his, here are his eyes. And his stinger. And he's got kind of round things. He's my small guy. So what would happen with these if they're all floating around? They are all floating around and we want to connect them. So maybe we have, maybe we have the sun connect them and we make some lines for the sun. The sun is kind of going down. We have the wind. This is not fantastic. And I'm just going to make something up. But you see that the same kind of thing works. As soon as you connect each piece, you've got the makings of a composition. Now, can you see that? Is it bright enough to see? I'm going to turn my light a little bit more so we get a little bit more. Um, little bit more illumination over here where I'm working. I hope that helps. Yeah, that seems to be better. Okay. So you see it can work with abstraction or representation. So what I want to do today is um, I put out my colors or at least some of my colors. I make no promise that this will be it. But I've put out, um, I've put out, let's see, cobalt teal and what is this? Cadmium orange hue and brilliant purple kind of a medium purple and I've put out diazinin purple which is a really deep purple. I put out ultramarine, ultramarine blue. Hold on, I'll say that three times fast. And brilliant blue. These, all the things in the jar are Liquitex. In fact, all the colors have been Liquitex except for the ultramarine, which is golden. And I also have some cadmium-free yellow medium, which is the new thing from Liquitex. Cadmium is a um, strong mineral, maybe not great for you, and so Liquitex is putting out a line of cadmium-free paints um, in the colors that were cadmium colors. And, oh, and I have a new bottle of cadmium red medium, which is one of my more favorite -er, is that a word, favorite -er? favorite -er colors more favorite colors, and titanium white. So I think I will start by making a blended background. And if you're not familiar with making a blended background, it's not hard at all. Oh, I also have paper towels. Don't forget your paper towels and your water. 
can't live without those. So um, I'm going to start by uh, adding some diazinum purple and it really is dark, dark, dark. As you can see, I added water to dilute it and I want it to say, stay a little wet so we'll be able to blend it. And I'm going to blend it with, with uh, Brilliant Purple and maybe some Cobalt Teal. I'm not bothering to wash out in between these because I'm blending the colors together and they're going to live together anyhow. So in order to make a blended tone, you just put the colors uh, with the space between and then start pulling from either side to blend your colors together. And you'll start getting a beautiful blend that is pretty seamless. I don't blend completely because I really like the um, look of it being kind of streaky. And I'm adding some white here, which you can see doesn't stay white for long. Because I haven't bothered to wash my brush in between, if you've noticed. And I think I am going to add some, oh, this is really thick this heavy body paint I haven't painted with in a long time. Some uh, cobalt teal. I think this definitely needs some water with it to get it to a consistency that I like. But you'll find with the heavy, the heavy body paints, they cover incredibly well. So if that's something you're working with, and I think I better need, I need to put on an apron. Since I'm a sloppy person, and I'm bound to be wearing this if I don't put on an apron. Okay, so we're just blending across, across the canvas. Um, in a different situation, it might be, and let's add some ultramarine blue. It might be stripey, but our goal is not to have stripes, nothing wrong with stripes, but that might be the way it would work. And we're not looking for stripes at this point in time. And I'll add some more of the Brilliant Purple and blend it in here with the Ultramarine Blue and the Cobalt Teal. So now we have a beautiful background and it's part of the beauty of, of acrylic paint is that we'll be able to paint over it. Now, if I were doing this with watercolor, I would take a whole different approach. I might paint the shapes first and then paint the background in, but that can sometimes get tricky. Or I would put frisk it down to protect it and then paint the whole background and then take the frisk it up and that would leave me a white page where the um, objects, the elements are going, the objects are going to go. So we have, we have this and I'm just uh, giving it, continuing to blend it so that we will, it'll dry quickly. And it's still a little wet. And so, um, let's see, 
had a friend come over and help me organize my studio a few weeks ago. And as a result, I can't find anything. But I always have my heat gun handy. And so hold your ears one second. I'm just going to give it a quick go here. Okay, that wasn't too bad. And so we've, I'll, um, I can look at my sketchbook to see what my design was, or I can just do it from memory, which is what I'm going to do. I had a circle over here, and I really like the way sketchy lines look so I'm not making any big deal about it then I want to do kind of arrow shape oh I think I turned it around from what I had drawn before but that's all right this is part of what intuitive painting is it changes every time you look and then so I've got my large element my medium sized element and my small element. This is where the varying the sizes comes in. And I had a teacher who taught me that you should have a large, medium, small elements in your painting. And he said, just remember Papa Bear, Mama Bear and Baby Bear. And I've got to tell you, that has stuck with me over all these years. And that's what I remember. Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear, the three different sizes of elements. So now we're going to add our lines. Um, I'm trying to remember what I had where. And since I've got a different design, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I had, um, I remember I had straight lines over here, straight lines connecting these two elements. Then I had a curve from my elliptical almond shape to my circle. And then I did another one on top, that curve, and maybe I'll do two down here. And then I think um, I think I will do a zigzag over here because it seems to work with this guy here. And I am going to have that go down and off the page, off the canvas. So here I've got my three elements and I don't know if you can see them and their connectors. But I'm going to start painting them so you'll see them very quickly if you can't see them now. I decided that I'm going to start off working in strong colors. I don't know if I'll stay with them as the painting goes on, but that's where I'm going to start. So since I've got um, green behind here, I'm going to make my elliptical shape red. And it does kind of look like an almond, doesn't it? 
Okay, and then over here, I have a lot of purple behind here. So my circle is going to be yellow. Now, it, yellow is usually a very poor color to cover over dark colors. But we'll see how this new cadmium paint works. And we'll see how well it covers. And it looks like it's covering awfully well. Wow. Yeah, it does seem like it's covering awfully well. I am putting it on quite thick. And in fact, I think it's a good time to use one of my scrapers. And I'm going to use this to make a spiral into the middle. And then I've got yellow paint on here. So I'm going to use it for some of my lines. Let's see how that works. Maybe a little bit more up here. Just to make the rest of those lines are sweep. And and here I'm going to just scribble into my almond here. And it started drying already, so we don't see much action. But that does add some dimension by seeing the colors underneath. And the, blend, the colors are blended, so you see more than one color underneath. Then I'm going to go on to... Um, my third element, which is my kind of triangular thing, and um, you know, I was going to do him in the orange, but I think I am going to do it in this um, yellow green. That's also from Liquitex. We'll see how that works, if that's a better association with our other two colors. And yes, this is quite a um, an outstanding color. If you have any questions for me, hey, Sadell. Hi, Renee. Ilana, so I've got the cousins here from um, Australia and Paris, although Renee no longer lives in Australia, and I think he's traveling the globe per usual with his beautiful wife, Twee. And Ilana has a fabulous new apartment in Paris. And Sadell, so nice to see you. She lives in New England. So we're kind of covering the globe here. Makes me really excited to have you all here. So here's our third element. And it's a big green, I don't know, green Eiffel Tower. It almost looks like it could be a Paris scene without my even trying it. Maybe it's Alana's influence. And so um, I'm going to keep working on these. And now I'm going to um, do some of our connecting lines. And I think just for the fun of it, since I have these vapor castell gel stick sticks out, I think I will see what they'll do on the canvas for us. And um, I have, um, let's see, I have two greens here. I have no idea. I don't work with these very frequently, so I have no idea exactly how this will work. This one has no color in it. It's, it I'll tell you a secret. It's a set that I use to work with my students on, my young students in public school. 
And so um, it looks like they've got crayon in them. And I was a little surprised when I opened it. But the green is rather pleasing. And a nice contrast next to the red. Now the strongest contrasts are the colors that are opposite one another on the color wheel. And they stand out the most next to each other. Red and green are opposites on the color wheel. And I'm sure you all know that as we prepare for uh, Christmas, because those colors are, are the classic contrast that you get at Christmas time. So we can blend these a bit. They're really nice that way. And I think that yellow may be too close to the green. So I'm gonna add something more to it. But we have it as a base. And I'm going to add, I'm gonna add some red to it over here. And I'm just thickening it up. And these crayons are such fun to work with because they're water soluble. So after I get this down on the canvas, and I'm also going to, um, while I'm over here, there's some red outline on our spiral in our yellow spiral and our yellow lines. You can also take these and rub them with your finger so they'll blend in and uh, looks like my fingers have been well blended already but I'm going to take a smaller brush and hit, hit the gel sticks with some water and see what it does for them. As we go to change color, I'm going to wash the brush. And remember, if you do end up mixing complements like red and green, you will get mud. They will make brown. So I'm trying my best to have the green stay away from the red. Of course, if it, if the yellow, I, yeah, if this yellow hits the red over here, we're in fine shape because that'll just take us to orange. And we'll have no problems with that. But I think I'm going to go back to paint because I'm not overly fond of these crayons, I've got to admit. I prefer my Karen Dash, but I can't find them because my wonderful friend helped me organize. I think I told you that already. But uh, it's really, it's not just an excuse, it's the truth. So I find that um, outlining lets you emphasize what your shape is. And so uh, we're going to do a little bit of that here. And I'm also going to add some color. Whoops. Wash this brush quickly. Add some color, um, some orange, I think, to our connection up here with our yellow spiral 
and red almond, that's for lack of a better term. So when you use lines to connect, you don't need to have them be simple. And we can keep adding and embellishing. And in fact, I'm going to add some zigzag here as pattern. And those of you who know my earlier work know that I've done lots of pattern in my work. And we'll see if I can add another row of this zigzag. May not work out so well, but we'll give it a try. And okay, that's interesting, maybe. Maybe not in the long haul. But if you don't try these things, you're not going to know what's going to work for you. So I really encourage you to try all different things as you're working. If you're working in acrylic, it's a great medium because it's very forgiving. If I don't like what I'm doing, I can just come in and paint right over it. And, um, and no one will be the wiser if I've done it effectively. So I'm going to add some more outline over here. I do love it with the red. It's one of my favorite combinations. It's cobalt teal. And I'm going to bring it all the way over here. And then I feel like we're missing something right in the middle. So I think I'm going to give us some wonderful purple dots that are going to sit right on our arrow or our sideways Eiffel Tower. And see how these guys are. We may have to add some outline to them if there isn't enough contrast. Trying to do five of them because odd numbers work out much better in, in our work than even numbers. So I'm going to get right out to the end over here. And, and then I don't know what to do with them. I think maybe I will take a finer brush and a real fine brush and outline them with blue. This is like a three hair brush. I don't know if you can see that. I can barely see it, so I don't know how it's going to work. I've never used this particular brush before. It's a new one. And so you and I will experiment together. Always remember that contrast is what lets people see an element in your painting. So if you want an element to stand out, like I want these dots to stand out, then you have to add some element of contrast. And here, it's really that I'm adding a dark line around each of these. And so um, they're coming out pretty well. These two are a little too close together, but you know, if I didn't point it out to you, you guys might not have even noticed it. So there we are. And I'm going to use this whenever you use, especially a new color like this, it's good to add more of it in other places. And so I kind of am in a 
zigzag sort of mode today. And so I'm going to add some zigzag with this ultramarine blue. And because I want to make it feel like pattern, I am leaving space between each of my ultramarine blue zigzags. And I will come in and add another element onto them. If anybody's got any questions or any comments, please feel free to type it in. I am trying to master this uh, technique of painting, talking, looking at the computer. It's all pretty complex, but it's a lot of fun. And I love having my people from all over come together. It's really cool, guys. Thank you for being here. So now I think I'm going to, you know, that orange. Well, I haven't planned to add that orange. That orange is sitting out here all by itself over here. So I think I better add some orange marks on here. And uh, that will help bring your eye around the canvas. In fact, I'm going to add it. Orange swirl here. Just for the fun of it. Yes, it feels like it should be coming out of my Eiffel Tower. Of course, I should have changed brushes to get a better shape. And now I'm trying to fix that up. Yeah, get a better shape here. I think this painting could use, I think I could use a different brush. This will work. Okay, sometimes I get stumped and I need to see it as a di at a distance. But you know, I've got the advantage here of being able to see it on the screen and sometimes that's as good as seeing it at a, at a distance. If I turn it, it gives me a better idea of what's happening with it. Which way do you like best? Anybody have a preference so far? Do you like the Eiffel Tower kind of perspective? I, I think I may be liking it myself, but um, I think I'm going to add, add some yellow and you know, I'm gonna do it with my fingers down here. Oh, 
I do love painting with my fingers. If you've never tried painting with your fingers as an adult, you really should because it's very liberating. And, um, and I think I'm going to take some cobalt teal and mix it with white. On oh, my fingers, how cool is that? And go in here. Go in here. And a little bit more. And in here. Okay. And then here's the back of my brush. Oh, no, it's not working. This brush isn't working. Let's see if I can find a different brush with a flatter end. It's going to work. I think this will work. We'll see. Yes, it does work. Okay. I don't know. Do we call this a typical painting for me? I don't know what typical is. I like to experiment so much of the time that, um, There's really nothing typical about what I do. So, um, these yellow dots help create the pattern and connect what's going on over there over there we want more white dots i think this i could go on with this for like forever however i think we're getting close to being done And um, I really want to thank you all for coming today and hanging with me. And I will definitely post um, what this painting has finally turned out to be. Oh, and I have to tell you, if you're looking for gifts, the Art Sparks cards make a fabulous gift, and they're only $20, and they're available on my website, I mean on my Etsy store, which is freelandfineart.etsy.com. I will put it in the comments below. I will also put a link to Kyla Givehand, my lovely coach, who inspired my, my manifesto. I think this is done, or at least for now. Kyla, who inspired my love, my manifesto. And uh, just to tell you some of the other things you'll find on that site, and I'm going to be shipping within one to two days, are these wonderful pendants that I've been making. God, they've been selling like hotcakes. People really love them. I don't know if you can see it um, in the camera, and I apologize for that. I also have been, have painted these gorgeous, I mean, this one's really one of my favorites, gorgeous ceramic tiles that can be used. These are the size of trivets, although they can't be used 
with very high hot materials because it will melt the finish. But um, they can be used for putting platters or, or vegetable dishes on or just to look beautiful on your table. And uh, I also have coasters and stuff. So if you're looking for gifts and, and timeliness is not the most important thing, please go and take a look on my Etsy in my Etsy store. So thanks for coming. I think I'll let you see my face again because it's really annoying to have somebody talk to you when you can't see them. And thanks for coming. And I will post the replay. And um, I hope you found it interesting. Maybe it should go that way. Maybe it should go that way. I'll let you know. Okay. Thanks again. Have a great Christmas to all you Christmas celebrators. And a really wonderful holiday and a happy, healthy new year. Okay. Thanks. Bye.